All right, last thing we are going to do today is fish in the news. Ghost Boy, last time we did a fish in the news video, did like a little gag where he had an intro and it was fish in the news and it was the SpongeBob thing. And I thought it was really funny, so I want that to be in every video now. So hopefully, if you're watching Fish in the News right now, it started with that funny intro. The first thing that we are going to talk about today is a little bit of what I will call anti-science, which is hard to explain. I'm going to need a lot of explaining. But I was personally sent this paper. This paper was worked on by the same people who worked on the paper where they split all of the fish, not just split, but sort of redefined the taxonomy of all of the fish. And I made that video and it did quite well. Um, at a video, I think it got like nearly a million views. The video in general did really well. It was a really cool paper. And I've been in contact with the people who wrote it since then. So I was told by them, they sent me this new paper that they published and the science articles that are covering it. And it's basically about the fact that all of the gars can just make babies and they're fertile which is there's a lot to talk about in this regard so let's start with why that's weird the first thing that we should talk about is typically the definition of a species that we most often use and to be clear species is a made-up word but the definition of a species that we most often use is that it can have babies with members of the same species and those babies can have babies AKA fertile offspring. The babies are able to have babies. Now, usually when two unrelated species hybridize, so, you know, they make a baby, that baby is sterile. That baby can't have a baby. And that's why they're different species. However, this theory kind of falls apart when they find in a paper that gar species, which have been considered their own species for a very long time, can create fertile offspring which is sort of suggesting that evolution is at a standstill. I think that's how they put it, that the evolution of these fishes is so slow and their, their molecular evolution is so slow that they have not genet genetically diverged so much, even though they are so clearly different. They live in different areas. They have different patterns. They have not sexually diverged enough that they can't make fertile offspring. Like a mule, yes, a mule is a good example. A horse is a species, a donkey is a species. They are species because when they breed, they make a mule. They can hybridize because they're closely related, but mules can't have babies of their own. They're infertile. For the most part, there are always exceptions, which is why horses are and um, donkeys are separate species. Of course, you can't just go around making everything have babies. Um, because that isn't really an effective way of defining species. You know, every time you discover a new beetle, there's like a hundred new beetles described every day. That's false. But you can't just every time you find a new one, just have it breed with a bunch of related beetles to see if it makes hybrid offspring. So we tend to define species without exactly checking that. And we end up in situations like this, where gars exist in many species. There are many species of gar in clearly unique areas, doing their own endemic things with their own patterns. There are seven species of gar, and they have completely different ranges. There's a Cuban gar, which is literally only in Cuba. Tropical gar, which I think also is on like tropical islands. There's like Florida gar and spotted gar have their own pattern. Alligator gar gets significantly bigger than the rest. Long nose gar have a significantly longer nose than the rest. They have clear morphological differences that any reasonable person would look at them and go, those are not the same species. And so they are not defined as the same species. And yet because of how slow the rate of evolution is, they can still make the babies. And there's a lot of technical information about how slow their mutations are. 0. 0.00009 mutations per million years. That's ridiculous. A mutation can happen in a population overnight. Well, not in a population, in an individual overnight in a population and not too long depending on the breeding time and how successful everything is so i want to talk about that because it was sent to me specifically if it ain't broke don't fix it that's the interesting part about it science places and news places always tend to say like this hasn't changed in millions of years this creature has been the exact same for millions of years 
And I always argue against that because it's not true. Animals are constantly evolving. Even if their rate of mutation is slow, they are changing and they are not the same that they were millions of years ago. However, this paper is sort of putting a damper on that because quite literally they are as close to they could have been millions of years ago now as they were. Gars are extremely efficient at repairing DNA after mutations or damage. So they, for some reason, have something built into their genetics that when they mutate, they just don't keep it. <laughs> Which is really funny because it could be a good mutation. They are just like naturally built into their genetics resistant to change. They created a system that does not want to change. It's like if all of the politicians right now decided that no law should ever be changed again and put in place a bunch of laws that will make it so that any future attempts to change laws will be unsuccessful. The GAR are basically doing that. They are just extremely resistant to change. They've perfected the system. That's the interesting thing, have they? They're well adapted. I'll give them that. They're pretty widespread. These are invasive <clears throat> or aquariums, fish. They're pretty widespread in their range. They're pretty successful overall. You can't really argue with that. I guess they've been really successful for a really long time. So if it's not broken, don't fix it is a fair conclusion in this case. So that's the interesting part, Maddie. How do they still look different? Wouldn't that be due to mutations? That's the interesting part. They are clearly diverging what did I just say? Diverging morphologically. Alligator gar get huge. Short nose have a short nose. Long nose have a long nose. Florida and spotted have spots in them. Cuban probably has something specific about it that I don't know. They look different. They live for the most part in different areas. There are some overlap like spotted and Florida and um, alligator gar and such. But for the most part, they live in different areas. But in the areas where they overlap, they are genetically separate. They don't interbreed. So they have speciated themselves one way or another. They don't breed with each other in the wild, typically. However, they are capable of doing so. So it's really weird because it's like, by our definition of species, them being able to make fertile offspring, they should not be different species. But they are clearly morphologically different, they live in different ranges, and they don't breed together typically on their own. So they meet like every reasonable person's definition of a species, except for the fact that they can make fertile babies. They just make no sense, and that's why it's a cool paper. I've read papers where they choose to define species as choose to not interact sexually when given the chance. Uh, that's also a terrible definition though, because choosing is not, the implication of choice doesn't make sense. Because that's only when there's active mate selection, which is, true in very few species overall. Oftentimes it's geographic or sexual isolation. <laughs> Me with men at the bar. Yes, you are choosing not to interact sexually when given the chance. Therefore, you are a different species than men at the bar. Is that is that your stance on this? Sexual preference? Yeah, that exists. Mate selection exists, but it doesn't exist in all species. And it doesn't exist in all cases. And not every new species is defined by mate selection. All right, anyways, I gotta go. My voice is starting to hurt. Oh.